So you're here for the Lenten retreat. Thank you very much for that, for coming to Newman Center. I think a shout out to John Kyler for having uh, that connection with you and bringing you on board for this. Um, you're focusing on Stations of the Cross and Lent. Mm -hmm. Can we talk a little bit about that as to the significance of Stations of the Cross? Obviously, it's a little bit more emphasized during Lent, but how can we keep that uh, as a spiritual journey, not just for Lent, but throughout our entire faith journey? Sure. Uh, well, Stations of the Cross, it's, it's uh, as, as you just said, you said it all, really. It's our, <laughs> our, one of our main prayers during Lent, but um, we kind of lose focus on um, what our, our journeys are through our whole life. Um, we, we, um, the Stations of the Cross is significant um, because we know Jesus carried his cross for us, but he didn't just do it for that moment. He carried that cross for all of eternity, for all generations to come. Um, with the session I just did um, at noon, one of the stations ended. He did this for all generations, or however that was worded. But um, when I think of the stations of the cross during Lent, I think of a trip, taking a trip, um, something that we prepare for, something that we pack for, and something that we go. Maybe it's not a perfect smooth ride, but then I liken that to Jesus' trip, if you will, um, to the cross as he prepared through his teaching his healings, um, he carried his cross, that was his luggage, if you will, and his journey to the cross certainly wasn't uh, an easy one, um, but it's, we kind of liken that to every day of the week isn't easy, even my coming here today, I had to make a couple U-turns because I got lost, but I made my trip, and Jesus fell three times, had his obstacles, but he made it, that journey for us to the way of the cross, so the Stations of the Cross, it's beautiful for Lent, but um, uh, the cross should be an everyday reminder for us that um, that's part of our part of our lives. There's there's many forms I heard you speaking about of doing stations of the cross. I personally think of the stations of the cross. I think a 45 minute thing. <laughs> Is there for the stations of the cross for busy people? How how would you suggest going about that? Sure. Well, we, there's a, a stations for everyone. We can see in Amazon bookstores or if there's <laughs> anything, but they can be adapted. I think um, last night with the religious education children, um, we prayed the stations a short form. We read the name of the station, the action, and then we said a hail mary, and then we moved from a station to station. But it was still aware. Jesus was nailed to the cross. Jesus was laid to the tomb. So they still got that action. Um, another way you can pray the stations is maybe pray one of the stations a day instead of all at once. Um, but really, uh, it is good to take time, though, at least to meditate. It's not just a quick thing. We did this. Then we did that. Then we did that. It should be something we should really take the time to meditate on. And we're encouraged to do that during Lent through our, our prayer to really focus on and those are not happening. How did your devotion for Stations of the Cross come about? Well, uh, I've always loved the Stations of the Cross. Um, it, since I was little, um, wherever we go on a family trip or visit something, we go to church, and the first thing I would want to look for are the stations in the church. Um, we didn't pray them in my parish like some do now on Fridays, but I was always aware of the stations. I always wanted to see what those what their pictures look like, even though I knew what the story was. In that way, I've always been attracted to them. But um, several, several, several years later, um, when I was working on my doctorate at Texas Tech, um, uh, my dissertation was um, about a musical setting of the Stations of the Cross, specifically the 12 stations. So a lot of that writing and research um, and that document um, was a not a spiritual guide, but a very thorough explanation how it plays into the faith, that composer's faith, why he chose it. So that's that's kind of stuck with me that way. And it's just since, since then and beyond, it's been one of my favorite prayers.